Nottingham City Council is short of £23 million and effectively bankrupt. We are having real difficulties with paying for the needs of vulnerable adults uh, and children in our care where the, the market is broken, where the costs are increasing. It's not alone. Following in the footsteps of Birmingham City Council, Nottingham is the second to declare effective bankruptcy this year and the ninth since December 2021. Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. As you've just seen, Nottingham Council is the latest in the UK to declare bankruptcy. It's issued a Section 114 notice, which basically says we'll only make payments that we're legally committed to from now on. And this is the second major council in 2023 to have done this, following on from Birmingham, which is actually the largest council in the whole of Europe. So what's going on? Why are these councils running out of money and declaring bankruptcy? Well, this is all part of the crisis that's currently going on in the United Kingdom. And in today's video, I want to provide you with an update as to what's happening. So we'll have a look at the details of why Nottingham has had to declare itself bankrupt. We'll then talk about what's going on with inflation and specifically drill down into what's happening with food inflation and energy inflation. Because if you've been following the data, you'll know that inflation has been reducing. So it has been coming down. And it's easy to sit back and think, oh, well, everything's fine then. Inflation's coming down. What's the problem? But you need to look at the details as to how quickly it's coming down and what the constituent parts are. And let's not forget, reducing inflation still means increasing prices. It just means that prices are not increasing as rapidly as they were previously, but they're still going up. We haven't got falling prices and we've got a cumulative buildup in the UK over the last couple of years of high levels of inflation. So the year on year impact of that is really starting to hurt consumers and businesses. But the other thing that's kicking in across the UK right now are the high levels of interest. The Bank of England has increased interest rates 14 times over the last 18 months or so. And that is really hurting everybody that's got debt or mortgages because the predominant form of borrowing in the UK is a floating rate. Most people don't have a fixed rate for the whole of their lives. So at some point, these higher rates of interest will kick in and cause them pain. And that's what's happening right now. But the other big thing that's hurting the county councils right now is the housing crisis. Councils have a legal obligation to provide housing and social care. And the cost of that has risen astronomically over the last few years. And that's really putting huge amounts of pressure on all of their budgets. And it's estimated that around 30% of all of the councils in England could face bankruptcy over the next 12 months or so. So in today's video, we'll go through all of the major issues that the UK is facing. And then finally, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months, and whether it's now inevitable that the UK is going to go into recession. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say once again, Thank you so much to everybody that supported the channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you've signed up as a Patreon or a YouTube member or bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks, I'd like to say thank you so much. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. And if you'd like to win this little guy here, this red dog, then please watch the video at the end of today's video. Nottingham City Council has become the latest major casualty of Britain's growing crisis in local government finances after being crippled by inflation and rising demands for its services. The council declared effective bankruptcy by issuing a so-called Section 114 notice on Wednesday the 29th of November, after finding a 23 million hole in this year's budget. Nottingham, which is a city in the Midlands in central England, is one of the largest local authorities to succumb to a myriad of financial pressures, including high inflation, soaring demand for social care, equal pay disputes, and risky commercial investments turning sour. The official press release from Nottingham Council said, a report discussed at the Council's Executive Board meeting on the 21st of November outlines the Council's latest financial position and highlights that a significant gap remains in the authority's budget due to issues affecting councils across the country, including an increased demand for children's and adult social care, rising homelessness presentations, and the impact of inflation. At the halfway point of the year, the Council is forecasting a gross general fund pressure of around 57 million, 
which is partly being mitigated from one-off in-year management and corrective actions, including the use of previously approved reserves, reducing the net forecasted pressure for the year to around £23 million. Past issues relating to financial governance, which led to the appointment of an Improvement and Assurance Board and an overspend in the last financial year, have also impacted on the Council's financial resilience and ability to draw on reserves. The situation has led the Council's Corporate Director for Finance and Resources and Section 151 Officer Ros Brown to issue a Section 114 report to all councillors today. The Council has said that the notice means that spending that is not already contracted, committed or otherwise agreed by the Section 151 Officer is immediately stopped. Nottingham's financial woes follow on from those of Birmingham and Woking that have also issued Section 114 notices and there are dozens more councils thought to be on the brink of doing so. The pressure on council budgets threatens to erupt in the run-up to a general election widely expected in 2024. Stephen Houghton, chair of the Special Interest Group of Municipal Authorities, said the situation with Nottingham City Council is more evidence that the funding model is completely broken. Our recent survey found that 30% of our members risked issuing a Section 114 notice in the next two years. There are fundamental systemic issues with the local government finance system that have resulted in an increasing number of councils reaching breaking point. Inflation remains a continued problem for the United Kingdom. And this chart shows the official rate of inflation over the last 12 months. And as you can see, there has been a movement in the right direction. In November 2022, inflation was running at 10.7% and it remained in double digits all the way through until March. However, the official rate fell to 8.7% in April and May, 7.9% in June, reduced further to 6.8% in July, 6.7% in August and September. And in October, the official rate of inflation fell to 4.6%, which is the lowest level that the UK has seen since autumn 2021. So at face value, all of this looks like good news. However, 4.6% is still more than double the official target rate of 2% set by the Bank of England. And Andrew Bailey, the governor of the Bank of England, recently raised concerns over the UK's economic growth and warned that interest rates will not be cut in the foreseeable future. In a recent interview, he said, I am very conscious of the position of the less well-off, but we do have to get inflation down to 2%. And that's why I've pushed back of late against assumptions that we are talking about cutting interest rates. If you look at what I call the potential growth rates of the economy, there's no doubt it's lower than it's been for much of my working life, he said. And there are also concerns that inflation pressures are starting to build again in the UK as food, energy and wage costs continue to rise. This chart shows the movement in food inflation over the last 12 months. And this shows that in November and December 22 and January 23, Food prices rose by more than 16%. They increased by 18% in February and in March and April hit a high of 19% growth. Since that time, the increase in food prices has been reducing. And in October, the increase in food prices was down to 10.1%, which is the lowest rate of growth that the UK has seen since the middle of 2022. However, we are still talking about a year-on-year -year increase of more than 10% in food prices. And as we've discussed many times before on the channel, the problem with food inflation is that it's indiscriminate. When the price of food rises, it disproportionately affects the poorest members of society because they're spending a bigger percentage of their household budget on food. And as we've also discussed before, one of the key issues that's driving up the price of food in the UK is the fact that the UK left the European Union from which it was previously buying large amounts of food under a tax-free environment. And when you look at the current rate of food inflation of 10.1%, it's more than five times higher than the Bank of England's target inflation rate of 2%. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about at this stage is the cumulative impact, the build-up of high levels of inflation. This chart shows the movement in food inflation in the UK over the last 10 years. And what this shows is that between 2014 and 2021, food inflation was running at very low levels. Between 2014 and 2017, food prices actually fell year on year in the UK. So food was getting cheaper. Now that situation did change in 2017 when food inflation started to increase again. And between 2017 and 2021, the level of increases ranged from 0% to 4.5%. However, if you now look at the situation over the last two years from the middle of 2021 onwards, 
you can see that there was a really rapid and sharp increase in food inflation, which peaked at 19% in March and April 2023. Now, the current level of food inflation is 10%, which seems relatively low compared to 19%. However, 12 months ago, food inflation was running at 16%. And the point that I wanted to make here is the year-on-year -year impact. So if we talk about a food product that cost £1 two years ago, the 16% increase in inflation that was seen in October 2022 would have resulted in that £1 product increasing to £1.16. If we now apply the current level of 10% inflation to that same product, last year's price of £1.16 now becomes almost £1.28. So a food product priced at £1 two years ago is currently priced at £1.28 which in very simplistic terms implies an increase of 14% in each year. Now, if you take a step back and think about what's been happening with wages and disposable income, very few people in the United Kingdom have seen wage growth anything like that. So even though the current level of food inflation is only, in inverted commas, 10%, the year-on-year -year impact of high levels of inflation means that food prices on the shelves are now considerably more than they were two years ago. And when you compare that to what's been happening over the last 10 years in the UK, this is a real shock for consumers. And that's one of the reasons why there are so many economic problems in the United Kingdom right now. This chart shows the movement in the price of energy products in the UK over the last 12 months. And your initial reaction to looking at this chart may well be, why are you showing me this? Because it's got lots of negative figures on it. I thought we were talking about problems with inflation. This looks like everything's going fine. But before we come on to deal with that issue, if we look at what was happening this time last year, energy prices in November increased by almost 56% and the increase in prices remained above 50% in December and January, dropped to 49% in February, 40% in March, then came down to 11% in April, 8% in May, 3% in June. And in the last four months, the UK has actually experienced falling energy prices, an 8% fall in July, 3% fall in August, 0.2% in September, and in October, energy prices fell by almost 16%. And at face value, a 16% fall in energy prices looks like good news. However, if we expand the chart to show what's been happening with energy prices over the last 10 years, you can see that between 2014 and 2021, energy prices moved around a lot. In some years, they actually fell. In other years, they went up but at no point did they go up by more than 10%. However, if you look at the right-hand side of this chart from 2021 onwards, you can see that there was an incredibly large increase in energy prices in 21 and 22. And in the same way as we've just discussed for food inflation, I just wanted to run through what that means in real terms for consumers. In October 2021, energy prices in the UK increased by around 20%. So that means that the equivalent amount of electricity that was costing you £1 in October 2020 was then costing you £1.20. If we now look at the situation for October 2022, energy prices were increasing by around 60% which means that the equivalent amount of electricity that was costing you £1.20 in October 2021 would then be costing you £1.92. If we now incorporate the current price fall of 15.7% seen in October 2023, that unit of electricity that was costing £1.92 in October 22 would today be costing you £1.62. So the overall summary of what's happened in the last three years is that a unit of electricity that was costing £1 in October 2020 would today be costing £1.62. So over that three-year period, the price has gone up by 62%. So on average, that equates to around 21% per year. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that that represents an incredibly high average increase in the price of energy over the last three years for UK consumers. And it's putting huge pressure on lots of households because just like food inflation, energy inflation is indiscriminate. Everybody has to have electricity and heating, and therefore the poorest members of society suffer the most when these prices go up. Now, a quick point of order, please don't send me any comments in the section below talking about the calculations I've just discussed. I know that it's not mathematically 100% correct to take an average over three years for a percentage increase, 
Now, I quickly wanted to talk about interest rates because this is one of the big problems that the United Kingdom is facing. And this chart shows the movement in the official rate of interest over the last 10 years. And this really highlights the problem because consumers and business have got very used to incredibly low rates of interest. That's what everybody has come to expect when they've been taking on loans. But as you can see on the right hand side of this chart, over the last two years, the UK has introduced 14 consecutive interest rate increases to try to tackle what was happening with inflation. Now, prior to these interest rate increases, the official rate of interest in the UK was 0.1%. So that means that the official rate today of 5.25% is over 50 times higher. And if you look back over the last 10 years, the highest level that the rate of interest hit was 0.75%. So the current rate of 5.25% represents an increase of seven times that level. And the rapid increase in interest rates is now starting to have a really negative impact, both on businesses who are struggling to be able to service the level of debt that they've built up over the last 10 years, and also on consumers. Because in the United Kingdom, the predominant form of mortgage that's used by most people when buying houses only has a fixed rate of interest for two or five years. Mortgages with a 30-year fixed interest rate that are common in North America are simply not offered by the vast majority of mortgage providers. And the problem that that's now presenting in the UK is that there are hundreds of thousands of people whose fixed interest periods are ending and they are now staring down the barrel of an increase in mortgage costs of two, three, four, five, six or seven times. And as we discussed earlier in the video, the governor of the Bank of England has made it clear that there will not be a rapid reduction in interest rates in the UK anytime soon. Now, the UK has high levels of home ownership and consumer confidence in the UK economy has a close correlation with what's happening with house prices. When house prices are going up, people have more equity in their homes, they feel wealthier, and therefore they're happier spending. However, when house prices start to fall, that has a negative impact on consumer confidence. And average house prices in the UK have fallen by 1.2% in the last 12 months, with all price bands and locations in England and Wales being impacted. And the biggest falls are in the east of England, where prices have fallen 2.6%, the southeast, where prices are down 2.4%, and London, where prices are down 2%. And one of the reasons that house prices are falling is that the supply of housing for sale is increasing rapidly, partially as a result of the fact that interest rates have risen so aggressively, which is now putting pressure on household budgets to be able to afford those mortgages. This chart shows the number of homes for sale dating back to January 2017, and as you can see, since the start of 2022, when interest rates started going up, there has been a consistent and rapid increase in the number of homes for sale. And today, the average real estate branch in the UK has 31 homes for sale, compared to just 14 in the middle of the pandemic. And this chart shows us a more detailed breakdown of what's happening with demand and supply. On the left-hand side of this chart, you can see that buyer demand has increased by 10% over the last 12 months. However, if you look at the far right-hand side, you can see that the stock of homes for sale has increased by 34%. So what we've got here is a very clear differential between supply and demand. Supply is increasing far more rapidly than demand is. And of course, Simple Economics tells you when you get a situation like that, it's likely that prices will start to go down. And this chart looks at the average discount against the advertised selling price for a property dating back to 2018. And what this shows is that in 2018, the average discount was 3.8%. It increased to 4.1% in 2019. However, as we went into the pandemic, the discount started to reduce rapidly to 3.1% in 2020, 1.1% in 2021, and hit an all-time low in 2022 of 0.6%. However, as a result of the dynamics we've just looked at, where we've now got an increase in supply, which is outstripping the increase in demand. In the first half of 2023, the level of discounts rose to 3.4%, which was the highest since 2019. And the data for November shows that the discount is now running at 5.5%, which is the highest it's been at any point in the last five years. And if you look at the right-hand side of this chart, you can see that the discounts currently being applied in London and the Southeast, are actually 6.1%.
And this trend obviously represents bad news for any homeowners because this is the discount against the selling price and selling prices are also coming down. So we've got a knock on impact here and it looks like we are now starting to see the beginnings of a rapid fall in house prices, which will represent further bad news for the UK economy because it will reduce confidence for consumers and therefore in conjunction with all of the other things we've been discussing in this video may lead to a drop in consumer spending and a contraction in the economy. This chart shows the movement in the balance of trade. So basically the difference between the value of all of your exports, so the things that you're selling to other countries and the cost of all of your imports. So all the things you're buying from other countries. And as you can see from this chart, in 11 of the last 12 months, the UK recorded a negative balance of trade. So it's paying more for imports than it's receiving for its exports. And a negative balance of trade represents a problem for economies because you need to fund that balance of trade. And the only way to do that is either from your cash reserves or other forms of reserves such as gold. And if we look at this chart, it shows the UK's current account, which is similar to your checking account. It's basically the funds that the UK has to spend on things. And what this chart shows is that in every single quarter in the last three years, the UK has recorded a negative figure on its current account. So basically the UK is having to borrow more and more money to fund all of its purchases. And if we expand this chart out to show what's been happening over the last 25 years, you can see that in virtually every single period, the UK has been running a negative current account. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because another county council declaring itself bankrupt is really big news. This is a really serious matter because county councils employ huge amounts of people all across the United Kingdom. This is the public sector which is funded directly by the UK government and therefore is a very safe job. If you get a job at a council, you could be there for the rest of your life. However, if that council goes bankrupt and doesn't have enough money to pay all of its bills, then there is actually a question mark as to whether or not it will be able to continue employing all of the people who have jobs there. So when a council goes bankrupt, obviously it's bad news for the businesses that are dealing with that council. If you're owed money by the council, there is a risk that you may not get it. Or if you've got a contract, the council may decide not to see that contract out to the end of its term, which could cause your business serious problems if you've taken on lots of staff in anticipation of that future work. But it's not just that direct impact on business. If these councils now have to start trimming the amount of people that they're employing, that will reduce the amount of money that's circulating in that local economy and have that domino knock-on impact that we've talked about many times before. So a UK county council going bankrupt is really big news. And this is the second that's declared bankruptcy this year. The other one was Birmingham, which is actually a huge council, which caters for around 1 million people in the UK. It's actually the biggest in Europe. And this is now a growing trend and concerns are rising that we could see hundreds of councils declaring bankruptcy over the next 12 to 18 months. And obviously, if that happens, there would be a massive negative knock on impact. All the businesses that are dealing with those councils would lose money and potentially future work and future cash flow. The people employed by them potentially could lose their jobs and we could see a real implosion in all of those areas. So this represents a major problem and a risk to the UK economy and also is highly embarrassing because public sector authorities should not be going bust. They are given a budget at the start of the year and if they stick to that budget, everything will be fine. But as we've seen from what's happened at Nottingham and Birmingham, it's not quite as simple as that. And one of the reasons for that is that these councils have a legal obligation to provide housing and social care for adults and children. And there is now a growing housing crisis in the UK, partially as a result of the fact that interest rates have risen so rapidly over the last 18 months. And one of the direct consequences of interest rates going up so rapidly is that the cost of housing has also gone up. Landlords have seen increases in their mortgage costs and those increases are being passed on to tenants. And in many situations, people simply can't afford to pay their rent and therefore are becoming homeless and are having to turn to the councils to provide them with social housing. And this wave of people looking for social housing has put an enormous burden onto all of the councils and many of them are now facing bankruptcy. So obviously the situation from the council's perspective is getting worse. But when you look at what's happening across the UK, there are some real problems starting to emerge. 
During the COVID pandemic, interest rates fell to their lowest levels ever and people started working from home as a result of the fact that they weren't able to go to the office. And this changed the world entirely. People started realizing that they could move further away from where they worked, buy a bigger house, live in the country or at the coast or in the mountains or wherever you want to go to. The dream was on and lots of people moved house and because borrowing was so cheap and mortgages were really affordable, they took on large amounts of debt to fund that dream home. But unfortunately for everybody that did that, mortgages in the UK don't have a fixed rate for their entire lifetime. They tend to be for only two or five years. And a lot of people who took on big amounts of debt are now facing the prospect of a huge increase in their monthly mortgage costs. And in many situations, it's an unaffordable increase. And what we're seeing now is a rapid increase in the amount of homes being put on the market for sale because people are having to give up those dream homes. And that's causing an imbalance between supply and demand in the housing market. And we're now starting to see house prices coming down. Now, that's good news for anybody that wants to buy a house. But the bad news is that interest rates have gone up. So mortgages are now a lot more expensive. And the overall bad news is that consumer confidence in the UK has a direct link to what's happening with house prices. When house prices go up, people feel more wealthy and therefore they're happy to buy a new car or spend money on holidays or go out and do things. But when house prices start coming down, people start feeling that their net worth is falling and therefore start tightening their belts and stop spending. And so what we've got in the UK right now is falling house prices, which is linked to falling consumer confidence. And that could lead to a falling consumer spending, which could lead to a recession. Now, you may be thinking that the obvious thing to do, therefore, would be to lower interest rates, bring them back down to a more affordable level and therefore reset the equilibrium. But as we talked about earlier in the video, the governor of the Bank of England, who's one of the most important people in the UK in terms of deciding what happens to interest rates, has specifically said that he doesn't think that interest rates are going to come down anytime in the foreseeable future. Now, what that means, we don't really know, but there are estimates saying that interest rates might not come down in the UK for the whole of 2024. So they could stay at 5.25% for the next 12 or more months. And if that happens, we could see a major housing crisis emerge because these higher mortgage rates will hurt more and more people as their fixed rates end. That will force more people to sell increase the supply of housing and therefore decrease prices. Prices will fall and that will reduce consumer confidence, which could lead to a reduction in consumer spending. And we could get a really vicious negative circle on the UK economy, which could definitely lead to a recession at some point in 2024. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. And this one is especially for all of those people who like to send me comments whenever I post a video on Russia or China or another country saying, what's happening in the UK? Why don't you ever cover the UK? Okay. Well, I have. This is it. And if you look back on the back catalogue, you'll see that I've actually made lots of videos on the UK. So please stop sending me those comments because it's a waste of time. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, if you'd like to win this red dog, please watch the video at the end of today's video. But before we get on to that, here's something to put a smile on your face. I'm constantly being asked about the statues in the background of my video, and I've got some really exciting news for you. I've decided to give one of these away as a prize. This guy here, who's an electro-plated resin statue of a balloon dog, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I once posted a video about a balloon dog called Squeaky. Now this is a really fantastic piece, really reflective, quite heavy, and would make a great addition to any home. And you can win this for just one pound, which is the equivalent of around $1.30, so really affordable. So rather than buying me a coffee or sending me a YouTube super thanks, why don't you buy a ticket in the raffle that I've set up to win this? 
Now to keep things above board, I've got an independent company to take the cash for me and do the draw. So everything will be entirely independent. I won't be picking the winner. It will be all at random. But I will post this to anybody in the world that wins it. There is a possibility that you might need to pay a little bit of import tax, depending on where you live and what the import duties are. But this is your opportunity to win a genuine Joe Blog sculpture. So buy yourself a ticket and good luck in the draw.